Good morning, stampers. This is our third card for February that I'm going to demo because this month is all about quilting. So uh, this card is actually a Dresden plate pattern, um, and there's a lot of uh, patterns and tutorials out there. I believe Mary Fish has one that someone has sent her. But it was uh, very tedious draw, taking the template and drawing around it and cutting it out. That was too time consuming for a class. So I just came up with the template on one long sheet. And this is on my blog if you want to download it. It's just a picture, a JPEG. And all I did was put, cut my designer series paper into a 3 inch strip. Of course it's 12 inches long. And ran that through my printer and let it print out on what I considered to be the reverse of what I was going to use. Now, um, you wouldn't want to print this many in, um, unless you're going to make eight cards. If you print one strip of this, five different strips of designer paper, and that would make eight cards because I used um, two of each color on the card. Um, so what I did, if you wanted to, you could actually just take the template and cut it into pieces and use the dotto and stick it to the back of your designer paper and just use the grid to cut by. That's also another way of doing it if you didn't want to if you don't have the right kind of printer with a bottom or back feed that you can feed in single sheets of paper. So this is the design printed on here and all you're going to need are your regular big scissors and the way I did it was just go ahead and cut each little plate petal. I guess you would call these petals in the Dresden plate. I don't know why it's called a Dresden plate. Um, my mother-in-law was a quilter. I should know that answer and I have actually made a Dresden plate quilt but I cannot remember why it's actually called that. Uh, probably something after an English china pattern. Alright, so there's my little piece cut in just the two strips. I'm going to use two of this color and two of the others. I've already got my other pieces cut. And then you're just going to snip off straight there. And then it's just very easy just to trim off the circular edge with your snips. Now, as a paper crafter, you should know the proper usage of your scissors, which is when you're cutting something that's not a straight line, like this is just a straight line, so that's pretty basic. And that's pretty basic, that's a straight line. But when you're cutting a circle, you don't cut like this you cut, you hold the scissor, squeeze the scissor, and move the piece, the object that's in the scissor. So if you turn it just like that, it'll be nice and smooth. Okay? I see that I'm holding that up so I could see it, I mean for you to see it instead of me, I didn't get that quite on the line. And you want to try to get these pretty close to the drawing because if you don't, um, your circle may not come out quite right. Now, I'm using the Fanfare Designer Series paper with Island Indigo and some um, cream confetti cardstock that I purchased from the clearance rack. I don't believe it's available actually in the current catalog anymore, not the cream color. But it's just a thicker, heavier vanilla color with little specks in it. And I thought the little specks would go well with something that's supposed to look like a quill. So once you've got all your little pieces cut, you're going to take your... Um, quarter page cardstock and we're just going to lay out our pattern the way I think it looks the best and I used you can see which ones of the colors from the designer series pack that I used I've got two of each cut out um, and now I'm just going to lay them around and you're going to need a um, one and three quarter inch circle. There is a circle punch from Stampin' Up! for that. If you don't have the punch, you can use your nest abilities. This is the one that's about one and seven eighths. And you're just going to lay it down on your corner of your paper. Um, I'm going to make mine right about there. And then just, um, what you want to do is just draw around it with your, with your pencil. Okay, now we're going to line up our um, petals accordingly. And you want to go over the line just a little bit. And what I want to do is start with the one that I consider the focal point, which is this Island Indigo piece here. You can use a glue stick, 
you can use uh, your tape runner. I'm just going to use the tape runner just for speed. Um, the ones that we'll make in class will probably use a glue stick. But I'm just going to take that and that's going to be my first plate petal. And then just go around from there with your other colors. You really want to make sure that you have the, the sticky part on the rounded edge since that's going to be uh, exposed the most to um, the edge of the card. You know, it might pull up. You don't want it to pull up. So you get some sticky on there. Okay, let's say let's go with this one next. This uh, paper is very muted colors, uh, but it's still very pretty combination because it's um, pinks and blues. I don't think I want that one there. I think I want that one on this side, on either side of the blue. Yeah. And try to line up where the the rounded part begins because that is more important than lining up where it ends down here at the end. Okay, let's see. This might go well next. If you're using both sides of a piece of paper, um, like I did here, then you can just print one strip and use parts of it because this is the reverse of that one. Okay, then we need a little tiny piece down here in the corner. I think I'll just use this one again. Now, if you want to just use a scrap, you can, since this is going to, we're going to actually go back and trim the card, make sure everything is just right size. So this can just hang over right there. Okay, and I'm going to stick this down on my silicone mat from Stampin' Up, so it won't stick to my mat so severely. Okay, let's see. What color can we put here? I want to put this other one that's the uh, Island Indigo that looks like lace. That's a real pretty piece. You could use the reverse of this. It's got some cute um, leaves on it. Put some tape out to the end of that. You notice how if I run over, I just kind of tuck it under. If you don't, you'll have to use your remover tool that removes adhesive, which you can get also from Stampin' Up. Okay, I need one more piece, and I think I'm going to use the back of something. Maybe um, the back of, of this one. Yeah, that's kind of different. Just be a little bit of a different color. Okay. And, oh, I'm going to need a little tint more in the corner. So, I think I'll just use the rest of this um, pink piece that we used before. I'm just going to take that. I'm just going to cut off a little piece right there and just use that pink piece. It may not matter. It may get trimmed off when I do my trimming. So we'll just do like that. And that fills in that little corner. Okay, so there's your half plate going around. And just try to make sure these little points right here match up. I did pretty good except right there. That's what, that one's a little off. Okay, and then we're going to cover it, the corner, with our circle. I'm just going to place that about, go over the edge about an eighth to a sixteenth, of, sixteenth to an eighth of an inch. Like that. Okay, now you're ready to turn it over. Take your big scissor. You can use your paper trimmer, but I just soon use my scissors. And just trim it off even with the card. Um, you'll mess up your paper trimmer and have to stop and clean it. That's why I just didn't use the scissors. They're easier to clean, and I've got dozens of scissors. Plus, I can send those outside with my husband for him to clean with the goo gone. Okay, so there's our first corner. Now we want to take three more pieces um, and put them up here in this corner. So I think I'll use these three, and they're just going to fall off the edge of the paper like this. Yeah, like that. Okay, so we're going to start with, of course, the center one first. Tape on the back. And I'm just going to lay it in the corner right about there. This won't have a circle because it's, the circle would be off your pattern paper. And match up the corners there. And then this piece.
oh, another pink piece. And there you go. Now you can come down as far as you want, or, or you don't even have to do this corner piece if you don't want to. Um, it depends on how big your sentiment and whatever other embellishments you're going to put on the card. Okay, so there are our ends off. And uh, before I emboss it with the lattice embossing folder, just to um, give it a little more of a look of quilted. Uh, I know a lot of people like a lot of distressing, so if you are that kind of person or you know, like the Tim Holtz look, you can take each individual piece and probably sponge the edges with maybe some close to cocoa or soft suede or craft type ink around the edges. But I'm going to actually take the um, marker now. This is the journaler, the black marker. The Island Indigo didn't show up very well, so I'm going to use the black marker. And I'm just going to make some little places like this that kind of make it look like stitches. And then do those on the edge. And then once it's embossed, you'll see that kind of looks like somebody did stitches between each piece. And I'm going to do that on all pieces. And on my card, I actually um, added the same design in the corner inside, which you could do. You could actually cut a piece of paper um, with like a border on it and then this be in the corner. After we get it embossed, it's uh, matted with a piece of Island Indigo. It's wrapped with some twine that um, is called um, twill tape uh, that I got a long time ago from Stampin' Up! and I'm just now using it. I took my Island Indigo pen and made fake stitches down the center. It has a piece of Island Indigo tied in with it and then it's matted on another piece of the confetti cream. And then this piece here is cut with uh, one of the new framelits, um, one of the new dies from Stampin' Up. They're um, the thin dies like a spellbinder. And I just cut it out of a piece of the this designer paper that matched there because I didn't, this is supposed to match Riding Hood Red but it really just was, the Riding Hood Red was just too strong to go with it. This was more pink, so I just used a piece of designer paper instead. I used the ovals stamp set and stamped this out and punched it with the oval punch. A couple of pearls, a little clip here. I think I'm going to clip a little heart underneath there, maybe in a softer pink. And that's our card for today. You can download the template for cutting out the petals on my blog. Um, it's located in the description at the bottom of this video. Thanks. Happy stamping!